Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Right. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our match preview for Ireland versus Wales for Thursday night's big UEFA Nations League qualifying game. And obviously, we've had a lot of shit going on in the last <laughs> last week or so. Uh, Declan Royce, the Roy Keane situation. We have Nick with us uh, on the show today. Um, so, yeah, where to begin? Who wants to start first? As if a League of Nations game couldn't get any more unexciting. We've had this week of shit, as you put it. The squad, look, we spoke last week when the squad, came, the squad came out. It was Rice then that took over. And we thought, you know, part, can you take him out of the squad? It's a very much meh. No disrespect to any of the players that are there, but it doesn't it doesn't grab you in a, at any sort of attention whatsoever. Now then, as if... if you look at it, and I was just thinking to myself, this, the saving grace is I watched Arthur play so well against Arsenal. I watched him be so aggressive on the press. I watched, like, there's a guy giving back on his career. He could play so well for Ireland, and then, boom, again. Just when you thought you couldn't get another sucker punch with this squad, it comes out. And worryingly, like, whatever about m missing a player of that quality to our squad out of, out of a pretty plain squad to start off with, take him away. But then, to have him taken away because of issues with assistant manager that goes potentially we don't want to really go on the rumour bill but this potentially link to another absences as well it's just a it's a depressing thought really isn't it yeah Nick what, what, what are your feelings on the situation yeah it's it's a bit worrying because I think when you know if, if two players have backed well seemingly Rice is backed out because of because of Kane and Arthur is backed out um, it could be the start of a really kind of vicious vicious circle because I mean if the assistants lost the lost the dressing room and O'Neill seems to be covering things up, you know, he brushed it off very, you know, very quickly um, a couple of weeks ago and all of a sudden it's blown into something absolutely huge. And my worry is who's going to be next kind of out the door. And it just kind of, it echoes Trapattoni. If you look at, you know, Gibson going, Foley going, the two Reeds going, like kind yeah. of an endless list and it's just kind of history of breathing itself. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm afraid of, yeah. it's almost with Keane as well. It's almost <laughs> Ipswich 2.0 as well. Do you know what I mean? He fell out with all the players there and mm -hmm. stuff. The thing that alarms me and it worries me is the fact that does Roy Keane have more of a say than Matt O'Neill? Is he allowed, you know, surely the, the manager should be the one, if there's any altercations, he should be the one having the, having the final say, not, not Keane. Do you know what I mean? That's what I don't yeah. care. I, th I think since, since day one, um, I've never seen an assistant manager of any club or any country have so much input. Um, and look, Keane is a dominant force um, on the pitch and as a coach and as a manager. But I mean, I think the line has to be drawn by O'Neill. I think I think one of the big things was O'Neill in his career, he's always had uh, John Robertson there coaching with him at Celtic and then at, um, at Villa in Sunderland. And I mean, he hasn't got him now. And I think he's almost given, I, I can't remember who it was last week, I was reading something and they said that the Irish players are kind of let off the shackles a bit on international duty and there isn't much instruction from O'Neill. So... Keane seems to be doing a lot of the coaching, but I think the input he's having kind of on the media side of things, I mean, it's it's attracting it's attracting a lot of interest, but I think it's a little bit harmful too. And I think that might be transpiring just a little bit on the training ground and yeah. it's really blown up. You have know? you ever seen an assistant <clears throat> manager give so many press conferences, have so much media attention? Mm -hmm. uh, well, Keane loves that. Like, and he portrays he that he doesn't like any of this stuff, but he does, he thrives on this stuff. There's a huge, the there's a huge <laughs> ego there and um, it looks like that ego is coming across in a negative way on the training squad then as well. Like, we've all read his books, etc. He comes, he can come across a well, however good of a player, he's a wonderful player. Even as a Liverpool, like we were speaking outside before, and even as a Liverpool player, you admired him so much. Supporter. For, yeah, not player. Not, player, not, <laughs> not yet. Maybe in my dreams. Uh, talk about a slip of words there. But <laughs> but you always admired him because, yes, there was a lot of crap with him, but he would do his talking on the pitch then, and there was a huge positive side. And the positives outweigh the negatives. Now it's getting to a stage where he's still that kind of character and probably got even more because he's he must be a little frustrated that he's not able to go up on the pitch and kick someone or, you know, takes frustration out that way. But now you have all that kind of negative stuff, but the, it's very hard to see the positives where they're coming from. And, you know, he feels like he's getting frustrated with the squad. He feels like he's questioning loyalty amongst the squad members. And when it gets down that out of a, an already pretty doom and gloom squad after. Like, a squad is never going to be happy after the way we lost to Denmark. No matter what, how good the players are, that's going to be a negative environment. You add in that, and it's like petrol in a fire. And I'm really, really concerned, I have to think. I, I would say it's almost like it's just going to blow up and the two of them are going to... He or O'Neill or maybe both are going to have to walk away and then we're left in the chalk altogether. 
Yeah. But don't necessarily think we're left in the jock because I think a lot more people will probably want to play for us in that sense. Like you look at some like maybe I don't know Chris Hutton or something probably be a, a, an obvious choice for most people to to want to take over. He's a nice guy. He, he seems quite friendly enough. Uh, players all seem to love playing yeah. for him. Um, he's made a hell of a job improving Shane Duffy. Um, you know, so I, I think he if if we're going to go down that road in the future, I think he he will one day be be the order manager and, and that'll be. A good day for, but kind of away from the kind of politics side of things and more t- towards the game. Mm-hmm. Um, how how you kind of see it? I don't know. Obviously, we know kind of where their you know their threats are. It's the the Joe Allen's, your your Aaron Ramsey's, Bale, and then Sam Vokes. It's, it's all they really have. I mean, they've got Woodburn. You know, Still he, he can do. But, it, but but when we played them, everyone was afraid of him when he came on. Uh, like I think we brought on Glenn Whelan or something to show it up. Um, but he he did well to be fair to him. I think that was might have been his last game for in an Irish jersey, um, or maybe it was he was in the Denmark squad. I can't really remember now. But um, no, I just I just I can't get my head around. The, like our squad is just there's nothing nothing there yeah. to, like that, that's it, to, they have to fear. Yeah, it's 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 hugely underwhelming. <laughs> like it's, yeah. And it's that's just, been trying to be nice with it. Yeah, and like I suppose we were saying, it's, it's the worst squad I remember since Steve Staunton brought that young team over to the States in 2007. Like, it's 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 fairly grim. And no disrespect to the lads. And, I mean, I look at guys like, you know, Alan Alan Brown, who I thought really struggled in, in his couple of games that he's played for us, but he's in terrific form. So that's that's a plus. Graham Burke is looking really confident. But, again, wouldn't, wouldn't really set the imagination alight. So there's two guys who are probably lesser names but could really do a job and I look at the likes of David Myler who's had a really bad start with Reading and I mean anytime he pulls on an Ireland shirt he's absolutely immense you know so mm. I think I but think we're sadly mm. sadly Ar- t- talking about players that all of a sudden mm. oh they're going to put on the green jersey and everything's going to be okay mm-hmm. whether it's <laughs> you look at players that have been that are like the Welsh squad is scattered of players in decent form yeah yeah and you know players that can turn on a bit of quality mm. You look at us from an attacking point of view, and it's it's as plain Jane as it can get, really, isn't it? Well, I think I think as well was the fact you, you look at Joe Allen when we we played him in Cardiff, and everyone was terrified about the way he was playing between the lines, and then obviously the lads did a, a number on him, mm-hmm. and uh, he went off, and then we started to shine. But I think it's going to be completely different, and obviously it's, it's going to be again in Cardiff. They're going to have Bale, Ramsey, and all are going to be in this time. I think they're going to be. Really coming at us, yeah, and don't forget they always won. Yeah, really, really. That was a like however great it was for us that night. It was they twice, took it twice as bad. Yeah, they took it very yeah, badly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it'd be a massive backlash. And I mean, like if if you look at the game in Dublin, like last year, um, Coleman broke his leg. Coleman broke his leg, but it was it was a depleted side. Like you know, I think I think Joe and O'Shea were playing playing centre half, and then. Uh, you know, really depleted side, and Bale was there. They had a fully fit squad, and you know they couldn't couldn't break us down. So it could be something along the same lines, but again, it kind of depends how he how he sets it up because he's going to have to accommodate what we have. You know, get the best out of Coleman, uh, McLean, and then try and work around your Browns and your you know. Yeah, Sean, but there's a lot of fullbacks in that squad as well. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, is there is all that history, obviously, with Coleman and stuff like that. So that will, I think, that will come into effect. This will be his first uh, real competitive game for Ireland yeah. since that game as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, so it be it will be interesting to see how he he is. He hasn't been playing great for Everton uh, this season. He did well when he came back in that last season originally, but uh, he just seems to be struggling a little bit at the minute. But he, he tends to up his game when he plays for Ireland anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think like even say like with Doherty coming in, Coleman could push up. Yeah, you said that. You said that last time actually when yeah. when, when you were with us the last uh, the last show you were on, and uh, it's not a bad show because mm-hmm. Coleman is quite good going forward either mm-hmm. way. And mm-hmm. if he doesn't have the defensive option or to have to go back, it kind of it would be ideal. And Doherty looks pretty assured so far. He's looking good. And I mean, Christie. Uh, I mean, he only. I think he only played a couple of games like since since the Premier League started because Fosu Mens has come into Fulham like so so unlucky because I think they. They kind of sign him as an understudy to Fredericks, and now Fredericks is Khan. <laughs> Straight away, they bring in Fosu Mensa, who's a, a really talented guy. So, um, like Christie, experience wise, Christie could come in because he's, you know, he's, he's playing the last campaign. He played probably more games than Coleman in the last campaign. Yeah, he would have it. Um, and then, but, but you look at Doherty, I mean, I thought he was great against Man City. Uh, 
and there's actually the argument I know we could say Coleman could play a bit, for, a bit further forward but if you look at Doherty's role of Wolves it's it's kind of that right wing back um, kind of pushing on a little bit so he, he could actually I think he might yeah. be more useful in the advanced yeah. position a li- bit, little bit like Steve Finnan years ago he, <laughs> when they used to stick him on the wing you know it could be could be something similar You know, my only worry is that when, when we do that we have these wingers there's no option for them when they when they get the ball when they are uh, anyway across the halfway line they've, no, they've nowhere ever to go with it like they can either go sideways or backwards and that's it mm-hmm. and it's just and then it's lumped up and then back to the opposition it's just a continuous thing or yeah. and you know it's not going to change it's an O'Neill team it's just not going to change but uh, like, uh, ideally we, we do our starting 11 show um, which would be a separate video which you, you can check out but in terms of a kind of do you see us parking the bus? Do you see us going at them? What what way this? I think it's going to be very reserved. It's a squad when you look at it, that's very much defender heavy. Um, flat back five almost. I think it's going to be at times. Well, it'll be a three at the back, but it will sit into a five. It's going to be hard to see anything apart from that for me. Really, I think he's he's going to get all those centre halves on the on the on the pitch. Um, he's going to start off with wing backs. We'll get sucked back in. And we'll have one strike up front. I just can't see it. Are you sure about that? Because it's a Martin O'Neill team, you know. No, you can never be, you, can, you can never be sure with a Martin O'Neill team, except that it's going to play negative football. Yeah, it's probably a wild card like Graham Burke start or something up top. I could, by see, I could see Alan. I could see Alan Brown starting. Um, I think he was kind of leaning towards him and kind of hurting maybe. So. Yeah, well, he's not getting much much time, but I think you know he does fancy Oren. He's a big fan of Oren, so he he could come in alongside Brown and then maybe maybe Myler holding so. You know, Cork midfield three, so mm. Roy Keane would be delighted. <laughs> they have <laughs> no, pla- no plastic patties. Yeah, Kevin Long yeah. at the back as well. Yeah, sword, yeah, yeah. Sword then, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it, what would you, I'd say they're going to come at us like like a bat out of hell. Yeah, absolutely. No, they'll be out for revenge. And if you look at the China Cup that they played in, they were very attack minded. And you know, Bale coming back in a home game for them is going to be huge. And then, you know, Ramsey and Allen again will play between the lines, as you said. And I mean, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a tricky game. I, uh, I don't, I don't fancy us. I, th- I think it's going to be I'm the same. I'm quite kind of nervous about this game. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. yeah, it could be. You never know. Like, it could have that kind of game that we that we had in Cardiff last year, where maybe we hit them on the break and absorb the pressure. Mm. But, but I do, think, do you mm. do do you think that either way, this is having such a negative effect on everybody else that it might make the squad a little bit closer? The squad that's there because if you look at the squad, that squad's been together for a long time. Those, yeah. those players like that's what we're saying there's no yeah. real surprises obviously there's Enda Stevens, Matt Doherty and a couple of those types of players who uh, are starting to get in a bit more regularly now which is good to yeah. see I, I, I think at a stage where as the likes of Steve, can I just say actually Greg Cunningham I know he's not playing but Stevens getting in ahead of him is again it's another strange O'Neill call but anyway that's beside the point I'm a bit mad for Greg Cunningham for some reason but I think when you've got the likes of Stevens and even Egan who's you know, I know he's been around for a couple of years, but he's only a couple of caps. And Brown coming in, and Burke coming in, and then Robinson coming in. With all this happening in their first few experiences in in an Irish setup, uh, you know, it's. I know that there could be a togetherness. That this could bring them more together, but I, but I can't think that that's the most positive introduction that they're going to have, especially Robinson, because I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing him. I think he's a smash. He scored player. the weekend, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, and he's he's that kind of player. Like we're kind of missing that. I know he plays centre forward for Preston, but like we're missing that kind of right footed winger. I know like Brady's played out there and O'Dowd has played out there, and I think he's going to be a, a really good asset. But him coming into that environment, I mean, I think we have him locked down. I can't see him doing a doing a right slash uh, Grealish, but I mean, that can't be a, a good introduction, you know. I don't know that. I'm just my thoughts. I think. Yeah. No, I'd be very similar minded. I think it's there's so much negativity. In, inside the squad at the moment oh, I yeah, I can see the argument yeah we'll all rally together it just seems like there's too much choppy water there at, at the moment there's been too much been said and done whispers of some of the players like coming out in support of, of the guys that are not in the squad at the moment I know you don't want to go too much down the rumour rail but you know mm-hmm. it, it all doesn't add up to a positive environment that being put in at a, with us playing such poor form we are in poor form mm-hmm. so much so much still of a hangover uh, from the Denmark games, um, both on and off the pitch, going in, so, into, in against a team that are going to be mad out for a bit of reaction. Mm. Their revenge against us. I'm not looking forward to this game at all. I really am not 
it's, yeah, yeah. I have, like, sorry can't be a bit more positive I usually am Mr. Positive over, over in the corner but I just can't I can't see any way I've been thinking around this a lot today even and I just really struggling to get any sort of positivity at all hopefully they'll all come around and we'll you know put them under pressure and all that but I just don't see it ooh ah um, no but uh, <laughs> what what would be your prediction in terms of uh, result dun, dun, dun. Um. See, the thing is, like, it could be, it could be an ill-all draw, but no, this is I, this is the three, score you think three, it's going to really be three, three one to Wales. Okay, head over, head over heart. Yeah, three one. Yeah, to Wales. I was going to say three one as well to Wales, and that that's a struggle. Of, that's us getting a crappy goal off a corner or something like that. And if they win, we'll be delighted. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But, but uh, yeah, I just can't see. I that. think just gi- given everything that's going on at the moment, and just the un- not a word, but the underwhelmingness. Of I the, like that. Of, of that squad <laughs> I had that to the dictionary but uh, yeah it's just it's it's uninspiring I can't imagine that the morale at the moment is is amazing I don't think O'Neill's given us the best chance as I said I know it's a subtle thing but even you know the likes of Cunningham not coming in and I know people again don't think Sheridan's in the best form but not picking him even your pal uh, Pat Huben you know <laughs> yeah. um, and Duffy Cole score but, yeah, yeah and Duffy even at Dundalk I d- again I don't know if he's transferred I think that's, to us. to be fair that's one that I was frustrated yeah. at the time but I think mm. there's still a bit of paperwork oh, okay. to that's, be sorted out so that's fair I'd enough. imagine he'd be in the next squad yeah so it's, it's it's those kind of things not giving us the best chance as I said I don't want to bash into Ender Stevens, but Greg Cunningham is a much better player than Ender Stevens, and I know it's a really subtle thing because neither of them probably would have played in this game but I mean it's 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 it begs the question is O'Neill giving us the best chance in the circumstances don't think he is yeah. Well, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, what do you think the score is going to be? How do you think we're going to set up? And um, what do you think on the whole uh, Roy Keane, Harry Arthur saga? And as well as that, we're, I'm going to be meeting uh, John Hartson in the morning and doing a video with himself as well. So if you have anything to add, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button now. And if you never want to miss a video, click the bell for alerts. For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.